I'll go ahead and get started. For a few of you are new, well, look, my name is Audrey McCool, and I retired some years back uh, yeah. from teaching. Uh, last time I taught was at UNLV. I also taught at Tech years and years ago. This is my husband, Barry, uh, who does sales teach at Texas Tech, so we're working on this project together, and the lady over there that, that most of you know is Natalie Henselay, better known now as Dr. Natalie Henselay. Yes. And I will be uh, there. Graduation program, and then she's leaving for Nacogdoches to take a position at Stephen F. Austin as a university faculty person. So we'll miss Natalie on there. And I did all I could to try to you know keep her from not graduating. This <laughs> <laughs> didn't work out. Boy, is she happy. <laughs> Uh, so we'll, we will have a new replacement for her, but it just won't be the same, I know, oh, uh, after the first of the year. Well, so we can hopefully meet everybody then. Um, we'd like to keep these uh, pre programs really very informal. So if you've got questions or comments, as most of you know, just speak up and we'll try to answer them. I can't guarantee that we'll answer them, but we'll give it our best shot to try to answer them as best we can. What we want to talk about tonight is trying to make your food and your recipes more healthy. Because people say, gee, I can't eat healthy because I like my favorite foods. Well, yes, you can. Uh, and we can show you ways to make some, maybe, your favorite foods more healthful. And we're going to give you a couple samples of different things tonight along that line. So, to get started, hope this works. Yes. Just some reminders again, because we do have some new people here. That the American Cancer Society has made recommendations for reducing cancer risk. The cancer rate is high in mule shoe, and so it's something we want to work on. And there are three key areas that, that are up here. Choosing mostly plant foods, and we're going to talk about that quite a bit tonight, the plant foods. Limiting red meat, avoiding processed foods. Those are the canned foods, the frozen TV dinners, things of that nature. Again, be physically every, active every day in any way for 30 minutes or more. Now, Barry was kind enough to point out to me the other day that anybody over 40, any women over 40, um, that have, should be exercising an hour a day. Because I don't have time for an hour a day, anybody more than you do, because I have to do all this stuff to keep him entertained. And if I just didn't have to do all that, well, then I'd have my hour a day for exercising. So we, the bottom line is that we all need to be active, and we need to be as active as we can. Now, active is not necessarily going out, working on the treadmill or what have you. It's just getting up out of the chair and moving around. So regular housekeeping, cooking, cleaning, all of those things are activities that all of us can do. We also should be aimed to be at a healthy way throughout life. And then Barry's favorite topics here, don't smoke or chew tobacco. And he has, I've picked out a mild picture, man. He has the real graphic pictures. And use sunscreen all year round when you're outside. Melanoma, or skin cancer, is one of the most serious cancer problems here in Mule Shoe and West Texas in general and in the rural areas. I grew up in a rural area. Even my dad, years ago, of course, was farming out and we didn't have sunscreen back then like we do now. But he had, again, a series of small skin cancers taken off, none of which were malignant, but it does occur. So that's a key item that we will focus on again in another presentation later on after the first of the year. So ladies, you gotta get rid of your <laughs> Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, but when I was in the high schools and um, on the football teams and interviewing the uh, athletes, I asked them when they win the football game here at the old shoe and they go out in their pickup truck and they spit in the cup and then they go to kiss their girlfriend, what kind of reaction do they get from their girlfriend? And believe it or not, the response I got was, well, that's okay, she dips too. <laughs> so if you have any contact with some of the young people around town, this will be something to remember when we do the program on tobacco. Um, talking again more about the foods and things that we can and cannot do. Your prepared meals, why do we say not a lot of prepared meals, processed foods, we've mentioned this before, almost all of them are high in salt and fat, particularly high in salt. Um, and they just don't have a lot of healthful foods in them like vegetables on it. One of my pet peeves with TV dinners and 
that some of my colleagues take or some of my kids is that you get them, but there's really hardly any vegetable, like a spoonful in there. So the processed foods are, are not the greatest. Uh, so what we would like for you to do is be able to learn how to modify recipes as well as what you purchase in the store uh, so that you are getting more healthful foods, but still having things that you like to eat. It doesn't take that long to prepare the foods from scratch, you know, compared to if you have to reheat or redo something that's a processed food that you buy. We want you to emphasize plant foods, and I realize that we're in Mule Shoe in West Texas, and the cattle auction is right down the road a piece, and that beef is big in this part of the, the world. So we're not going to tell you not to eat beef. We just want to tell you to eat a, like, a little less beef or eat a smaller portion of the beef and mix in some chicken or fish and some other meats along the way and extend the meat that you eat with the vegetables. Why plants? We've talked before. Lots of fiber. Most of the people in the U.S eat far too little fiber compared to what is recommended for us, and, and I'm sure I'm no exception there either. Uh, vitamins and minerals come significantly from the plant groups, and yes, you can take the one-a-day vitamin pills, but you'd feel much better if you'll just eat the vitamins and the, the fruits and vegetables and get the fiber and the other nutrients that we don't even know about. And there's been tasks done that if we feed you just vitamin pills, it's not the same as if you eat the plants and, and uh, fruits and vegetables and get the vitamins and minerals directly from the foods. Phytochemicals, things like the flavonols that we've talked about, and that's that they're getting a lot of press in terms of cancer prevention. And you can't go out and buy necessarily a complete flat, uh, phytochemical supplement pill that you can take three times a day or whatever. So it's better again to eat with the plants and our plants and the fruits and vegetables. They're high in plant foods, high in fiber, high in water, relatively low in calories for most of them, which means they have a low energy density. Or for someone who is diabetic, on it, um, that means that they are going to to be digested slower, give you a more constant stream of, of insulin or glucose into the bloodstream and actually be better for you in helping to regulate uh, the, the, uh, the glucose level in your bloodstream. So plant foods, they fill you up without making you as heavy as we might be otherwise. So how many plant foods should we eat? Remember we've talked about the New American Plate, two thirds of the plate should be plant foods, either fruits, vegetables, legumes, but some kind of plant food. Whole grains, great addition to entrees and salads. Um, talked a little bit about whole grains. We did, especially last time, but then a lot of you weren't here last time when we were uh, experimenting with some kind of different whole grains, maybe, that you, you uh, weren't terribly familiar with and probably aren't on the, the shelf in the stores here locally anyway. Um, but we had the couscous, uh, which is sort of a whole grain, uh, but has is really some refined flour in it. It's come from the Middle East. And then we had the real whole grain that's that's very good, the quinoa that we were making into different things. And, and we we had samples of that. Some of the people liked it. Some of the people said never <laughs> on my part. Uh, but quinoa is a good alternative whole grain, and one of the reasons that it's good is it has a high amino acid content, which means a high protein content. It's one of the grains, and I put grains in quotes because quinoa isn't really a grain, it's really a grass seed more than a grain. It's a little bit different from, a, from a, say, a barley or a wheat or their own, or oats. Uh, but it has a better amino acid complement, so it's closer to complete protein. So if you are eating that, uh, whereas with rice or wheat, you need to eat some kind of uh, animal protein with it to get a complete protein for building muscles. Quinoa has essentially the complete protein with it. Nonetheless, uh, it's something that's different, almost died out years back, but now it's making a comeback, and so you're finding it more in the store. It, it, like rice, it has very little flavor, so it blends in well with any flavor that you might cook uh, it with, 
there and can be used to replace rice or pasta in any kinds of uh, dishes that you might make. Uh, if you weren't here last time, we did give you the quinoa recipes that we experimented with last time. Um, but the whole grains add texture to the dishes, often have a nutty flavor. If you uh, just cook like barley or brown rice, then we want you to use the whole grains, not the refined grains. And then you can experiment with a variety of grains. And I just listed some here that are fairly common, the brown rice. And I know that the local store has brown rice both in uh, regular cooking and the instant brown rice, whole wheat pasta, they've got that. Barley, I couldn't find on the shelf. Quinoa, I couldn't find on the shelf. Wild rice, which is, again is a grass, similar to the quinoa. Boulder, which is cracked wheat. Colored rice, any colored rice is a whole grain. Oats in many farms is whole grain. And whole grain cornmeal is also a whole grain, but not all cornmeal is made from the whole grain. And it's important that you have the whole grain uh, because you get the, the, the uh, fiber from the, the outer bran around the grain and you get the vitamins and the, the fat from the endosperm that's there, if you're, or the, the germ that's there. If you just eat the, the white flour, it's just the endosperm and, and all the bran, all of the vitamins and minerals and the, the germ go away. Why don't we see a lot of whole grains sometimes, like whole grain flour? Well, it's because it, when it has the germ in it, it has an oil. What happens to oil if it sits on your shelf for a long time? I'm sure a lot of you know. It starts to smell not so good. It turns rancid. So if you're going to keep whole grain flour, I, and I use a lot of whole grain flour, but I keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer right, so that it keeps it from going rancid as quickly. Um, another thing that we did, that I brought along this time just for something different, because barley is not on your shelf, but a, kind of an old fashioned grain, one of probably you have done a lot of things with barley maybe years back. Oh, it's wonderful soup. It's a great item in soup. Um, because I had some barley on it for an extra sample to think tonight that you don't have a recipe for on it, we've got like a little barley salad there that we're going to give you to taste and try as well. But it, I don't have a recipe for it. I only had so much time. <laughs> and time went away. <laughs> But I thought, well, I'll bring another whole grain item since we talked about it last time and a lot of you weren't here and it would be something different to sample. If anybody wants a recipe for it, I can maybe do it over Christmas and we'll bring it next time. But you may not like it at all because you don't think of barley as being part of a, a salad on there. But the item that we have, I think we, we decided would be really good on a nice bed of greens with the, the barley on it as just a little side salad. So let's see, moving on. We'd like to you to consider thinking about meat and fish with fruits and vegetables. And I know that gets away from, okay, here's the roast beef and here's the potatoes with the gravy and here's the corn over here, like we set up our plate and, and never the, any of them should touch any of the others by any matter of means, although we want to eat them separately. But what we really would like to do is several things in this pairing. Use the fruits and vegetables as an edible garnish to things that you're fixing. So if you're fixing, uh, let's say, um, baked chicken or something, can you put a little fruit or something with it that would be a garnish? Is there a way to use some of the, the fruits and vegetables? Just even the small amount adds up on there. So you don't necessarily, although a half a cup, let's say, as we know, is a serving for fruit or vegetables. And you say, I can't put a half cup on there. Well, can you put a tablespoon full or even a teaspoon full and over time it builds up and then you do have more servings. Sandwiches are great. One of my pet peeves, only because I just can't eat a sandwich if it doesn't have lettuce on it. That's why we don't put more lettuce, tomatoes, whatever on, on sandwiches and get the kids especially used to eating those um, garnishes on the sandwiches. I've made kids for sandwiches for a lot of grandkids and what have you. Oh, I don't put any lettuce on there. Oh, I don't want this on there. Or even we've gave, taken to Subway, you know, where you can make your own sandwich. Well, let's see, I want turkey and the bun. Well, what else do you want on the veggies? Well, I don't want any. Well, come on, guys, you know. Kids, we need to learn 
to have lettuce and vegetables on our sandwiches. All kinds of vegetables that you could use on sandwiches, again, as a garnish. Yeah. Add variety of vegetables to soup. Almost any soup you can make, you can add some kind of vegetables. Onions, nothing else for some flavor. Fruits and vegetables to breakfast breads, cookies, cakes. Anybody in here not like banana bread? Most of us do. There's all kinds of things that we can make. Banana bread, date bread, jerry, zucchini, all of those things we can Cranberry add to walnut. vegetables. What? Cranberry walnut. Cranberry walnut would be good, yes. And no, I will not make you some tomorrow because I have other things that I need to do. <laughs> Yes, we have this bread recipe, and so you and you can make a lot of variations on the recipe. Um, again, I've never gotten it typed out here. I need to need to figure out how much the, uh, whether it's okay on the oil content because it does have a fair amount of oil, but I can, can use canola oil in it, and then it's okay. Um, but very light, other than fruit breads. And, so I think that was a subtle hint. <laughs> but you can add lots of things, and we'll talk about even with adjusting baked goods to have more fruits in the recipes to replace some of the other ingredients. Come on. Okay, good. Sauces. Again, it's an easy way to add fruits and vegetables because you can make sauces from a lot of different items. Um, I don't suppose you probably thought too much about pureeing some beans, white beans or something, and making a gravy and sauce out of it. Uh, all kinds of lentils out there make a great sauce or a thickener uh, for soup if you want like a stew or a soup or something and you want them just a little bit thicker, you can do that. Uh, all of these, these uh, beans, potatoes, legumes and so forth blend well with a variety of flavors and seasonings. Um, I'm suggesting maybe you should think about maybe some of this instead of the cream gravy that everybody loves. You know what the fat content is of cream gravy? Sure you do because you make cream gravy at home. <laughs> uh, and we like that and we want something with our meats and with our, the foods that we have. Just think about is there some way that you could try using some of the, the beans or something to make an alternative sauce. Fruit sauces, easy to make, again go well. The obvious one since we're here just after Thanksgiving is cranberry sauce with turkey, with ham, with all of these holiday meats. But you can make sauces out of peaches, pineapple, and, and any kind of fruit. And they're available year round. We think, oh, we can't do this if it's not available. Well, they are available. You can use canned, frozen, fresh. Doesn't matter. They're all going to make the same sauce. And we're going to give you the easiest peach to make peach sauce you ever had in your life tonight as the item, or the uh, frosting, if you will, with the gingerbread. And it won't take you more than two seconds to make this peach sauce. And you can use it for a lot of different things that you would like a sauce with. We want you to think about adding new vegetables. My prime example sitting back there at the table, if it's not peas, beans, or corn, but now he's moved up so broccoli is sort of okay on there. <laughs> It's not a vegetable, and we can't eat it. But I'm working on it to try to make it better. I've been working on it for years, and that's why we moved up. So broccoli is acceptable now as another item that we can have. Um, and even in salads, one of my pet peeves when I go somewhere is I get everything is an iceberg lettuce. But why is an iceberg lettuce? Well, the restaurant's cheaper for the restaurant, so they're just going to use that. It's easier to handle. But the iceberg lettuce is the worst of the lettuces that you can buy in terms of nutrient contribution to you. So if you're gonna make salad, get a grain that's actually going to be better for you. So I was wondering how many of you knew all, all of these vegetables? Have you all eaten them? Don't all raise your hand at the same time if you've eaten them all. I haven't. Well, I thought maybe you hadn't, so I brought some samples to show you. And since I don't want to take these home, we're getting ready to go to our sons in San Antonio. Uh, I'm happy to have you take in, any of these home with you, and we would love to have you take them home. We're going to start with bok choy. You were asking last time about bok choy. What did you was? Bok choy. 
Mm. You have Asian or Chinese food, mm. chances are good it's going to have bok choy as a green in it. Well, I have two kinds of bok choy. I have regular bok choy and baby bok choy. Huh. I like the baby bok choy because it's, I think it's a little bit more tender. Uh, Natalie said it's the cutest little thing she ever saw. <laughs> Compared to big bok choy, uh, but it's, it's a again it's a relative I think the cabbage family, uh, but use a lot of Asian foods. Yeah. So I'm going to hand it around. Let's see where we start. Do you eat the white part or just take the green part off? I would take mostly the green part unless I was going to make a stir fry or something. Then I would use a lot of these stems in the in the stir fry. But it's going to take if you, it depends because it's going to have a cabbagey family kind of flavor to it. Um, and these were in, not in the United here, but they were in the United in, in Lubbock when I went shopping last night there. So let me hand them around and you can take a look at them up close. Did you say you eat the green bar? The green bar is just like any other uh, salad, but I used a lot in Chinese cooking where you're making stir fries and different vegetables like that, which is great because what we want you to do with the meat is use it as a flavoring item and so your stir fries and your mixed or stews or anything that's a mixed dish is perfect for that. And this would be great with a mixed dish. Sweets with it. Baby one. Cute. I trust you probably all know what this is. No? Kale. You see it in the store use of decoration. You eat it? Yes. Kale is one of the most nutritious of the lettuce family out there. But a the the few of us eat kale. It has a little bit of a bitter flavor to it, but it's, if you mix it in with your salad on it, it's a great item to mix in your salad. And they use it to garnish on the produce shelf, and we really should be using it to eat in the produce department. And our third lettuce family item. I do the same thing. You know what this is, anybody? <laughs> Not romaine, it's green chard. And it's red chard and green chard. The green chard looked much better in the store than the red chard yesterday, so I didn't get any red chard because I was not going to bring a sample of something that didn't look really good for you to eat. But it's chard, again, it's a little bit of a bitter flavor to it, but it makes it right into a salad. It can also be used in a lot of soups, stews. Mixed, ve mixed vegetable dishes of that nature it cooks up well. That's char. Anybody know this? This is fennel. And it has a little bit of a licorice flavor to it. If you're using this, you chop off the tops. Oh, no, this is not dill, it's fennel. It smells not real, doesn't have much smell to it. And you slice this up, and this can be used even raw in a salad to add crunchiness to a salad, or you could again add it into soups, any kind of cooked dish or stew like that. But you cut the tops off and just use the ball down here. Now, the barley dish that we have tonight, that little sample that we have, has fennel seeds in it for a little bit of flavor. It might give you some idea of the fennel flavor. I'm sure you've You've tasted it somewhere, you probably haven't realized what it is. It tastes a little bit like a licorice flavor, just a shade of it. That's fennel. This is part of a whole. The daikon radish. I'm sure you've seen these in the store. It's a Japanese radish on there. It tastes a lot like a radish, but again, you could cut it up, crunch it, be a crunchy part of a salad, or use it anywhere that you would use a radish. Daikon, D-A-I-K-O-N, Japanese daikon radish there. And they're really big, so that's why it's just a part of a radish, because they, they chunk them up in the store and rather put the whole huge radish in the store. Is it as hot as the radish that we know? Yeah, it's more like it's going to be hot. Maybe a little bit sweeter than that. But the same idea. This is chayote squash. Yes, not the squash on there. Very popular. You could, this is definitely in your store right down the street, as is the daikon radish that I got there. Um, so this, again, would be like any other squash. If you had a zucchini or anything like that, you could cut it up and use it in your soups, stews, um, or any other way that you might use it. 
looks like a pear. It's, it's called some kind of pear squash on there. But it's a, it's a, it's a squash, not a pear. <laughs> this I'm sure you've never heard of. I was surprised to even find it in the store. They're called, they labeled here sunchokes. They're really a Jerusalem artichoke. And a Jerusalem artichoke, if you read it here, it has a crispy, crunchy texture, sweet, nutty, slightly uh, artichoke type flavor. Eat them raw, boiled, mashed, roasted, or added into soup. So again, it's something you would need to peel this, peel the outside skin off of it, and it would make a crunchy addition to a salad or to a soup. Or you can make it mashed and mix it in with potatoes like you could also mix in uh, cauliflower in the potatoes and make a mixture of mashed potatoes and cauliflower and another way to use the vegetables. <laughs> this is something that takes a little work to prepare but it's really good and salads especially with citrus, jicama, you need to peel it. It's kind of hard to peel, you got to work out a little bit and then it's really crunchy, it's moist and it's crunchy and just makes a wonderful salad with mixed with uh, citrus like orange, uh, oranges or pineapple or uh, mint, anything like that that you would make into a fruit salad. It blends really well with it. I already go in a, in a regular lettuce salad as well. It's crunchy, it's good, and it's kind of sweet. And that's that we'll save for later. So those are my samples so that you can know something about pickama. Pickama. Oh. We want to show you some new vegetables so that you can think about other things that you might want to have for your salad. But it is a true crunch. It's like a potato. So you have to boil it. You just have to potato. That's written on there. On your Hey, here's some things you can do as replacement in your, your recipe. Whole grains, legumes, vegetables, replace some of the meat. Uh, for example, if you've got a stew or something that you're making that has meat in, replace about a fourth of it with cooked brown rice, or quinoa, barley, or even shredded carrots and shredded zucchini. If you like that better than the, uh, the whole grains. Uh, use kidney beans, black beans, portobello. Portobello mushrooms are a great meat replacement. Those are the big giant mushrooms on there that if you cut up and they taste a lot like meat, especially if you're mixing them in with the flavor. Uh, sauce of some sort. Again, vegetable sauces, you don't need a small amount of meat. Uh, as pasta as we talked about, using meat as a flavor, you can stir fries or stews on it. Add in some of these vegetables or legumes to replace part of meat. You save money to begin with, it's cheaper, and we'd like people to also be able to eat more economically these days but it's also more helpful. Uh, meals, meals. Any, all of you are tea, tofu lovers? I didn't think so. Again, <laughs> beans, wide variety, low cost, high quality protein, uh, complex carbohydrates, means it's digested slowly, which is good for the diabetic people, fiber. Soybeans are an exception. They do have fat, but it's mostly unsaturated fat. Beans, great source of iron, B vitamins, zinc, and trace minerals. You're just not going to get a good uh, intake of these iron vitamins without some of the beans used regularly. Um, someone once told me they should be uh, serving of beans of some sort or another once a day. That would then make me help. Well, maybe so. On a night. Not sure I've tried that, but it's something to think about. Fruits, apples, berries, nuts. We haven't talked about nuts. Nuts are another good way to add healthy, uh, healthy ingredients to products. Just make sure you're using the unsalted nuts with everything because we want to keep the sodium down. Uh, not just pecans, walnuts, and almonds that we're probably all used to, to using, but think about soy nuts, hazels, pistachios, peanuts, cashews. But you don't want to add too much of any of the nuts, again, because they do have fat, even though it's a good fat and not a saturated fat. Uh, but it's going to carry a fair amount of calories. So use them more as a garnish, like in a salad, or just to add a little bit of texture just to a product that you're making. One of the items that we have here tonight has walnuts in it, but I bet you can't find them. So somebody come up with them. Tell me, there's the walnuts. <laughs> um, 
good sources of protein and so forth, and use ferrin. Casserole top, that's a good way to also use nuts. And you can grind them if you've got a spice grinder. Get enough of your little green stamps at, at United and get the spice grinder that you can get for like 40, 60 or something of the little green stamps and grind up your nuts and then you've got another thickening agent besides the beans that you could put in sauces. And replace part of the flour and bake goods again. Uh, tofu. I thought maybe you had weren't real familiar with tofu, so I brought you a tofu sandwich to pass around. Uh, we're also willing to cut in little pieces if you all like to taste it, but I tell you it doesn't have much taste to it at all. Which what makes it good in, to use sometimes in, in products because it takes on the flavor of the product that you're using it with. This is firm tofu. Tofu becomes uh, medium, soft, and so forth. But I like the firm because it's going to hand around easier. But that's tofu. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's got the map. I drained it and drained it, but I still probably didn't get all the liquid out of it. You have to be careful when opening the package because it does have liquid in yeah. um, Now you tell me. <laughs> the ways you can use tofu if you'd, you'd like to try it sometime. Uh, if you don't like tofu. Remember, it's made out of soybeans. Another option of soybeans is edamame. The, the green soybeans, which are not the soybeans that's in your field or in what that might feel back home from the farm either. It's a different kind of soybean. Um, but the kids sometimes like them, and it's a, again maybe a good way to introduce the kids to some vegetables. Or that you just steam them, and they're usually, usually the freezer section. Um, and then they pop the beans out of the pods. And beans. You know, we did some once for a kids program. The kids all knew what they were. Adults, of course, didn't, but the kids all knew what they were. And they just went, and they were gone because they were grabbing them up because it was fun for them to pop out the, the beans and eat the, eat the, the uh, soybeans. So again, a good way to maybe get the kids involved in eating some of the vegetables. Uh, use them in salads. Or do the kids, but the kids might eat them as a snack. Canola oil and olive oil are recipes for cooking. So for spreadable butters with canola and olive oil added. The omega threes. Avoid stick margarine. There's a high trans fat, and we know that trans fats are not good for us anymore. Baked goods also all but have a lot of trans fats if you're buying the commercially baked goods. Um, the package of donuts there is not the best in the world. And check your product labels. Even if it says zero trans fat on some things, the chances are good that it may have some because the law says it only has if it has to be more than five. Uh, half a percent, then it has to be labeled. If it's half a percent or less, then it doesn't have to be. So you have a lot of small amounts of trans fat in some of your products, such as your baked products. Sour cream, good replacement with is plain yogurt. If you're making dressings and toppings, uh, you can make whipped cream from evaporated milk and non-fat dry milk salads. I wouldn't be able to live without my non-fat dry milk salads in there, because one, they don't have any fat, they do carry protein, and they add a lot of creaminess to things when I'm making mashed potatoes, or the, and you can make uh, whipped cream out of different things that you could add to that if you want, say the creaminess of whole milk, but you want to get away from the fat, you get out your box of non-fat dry milk solids and add them into the items that you're making. Um, cream gravy, again, a good way to make it a lower fat cream gravy. Uh, mashed potatoes, skim milk, and add the, the milk solids to it. Don't tell him, that's what I've been doing for years. <laughs> <laughs> Steam or roast your vegetables, olive oil. Make homemade salad dressings, too. It's not that hard. Um, and then re change the ratio of oil to vinegar. If you buy a commercial uh, salad dressing, the normal ratio is three parts oil to one of vinegar. We'll just flip it. And then you've got less fat and you've still got the flavor from the different vinegars. Add some low-fat yogurt for creaminess, or even low-fat cottage cheese, and we'll add creaminess to it. Uh, if you like jam and jelly, there are low-sugar fruit jams, non-fat cream cheese, those kinds of things that you can get to put on um, rolls. And on that one handout that I gave you, the one that says healthy for you, gives you all kinds of ideas of things that you could get as replacement items in the store to help cut down fat, salt, um, and be the more healthy item. 
reduce the fat, okay, adding more fruit again to your baked goods, you can substitute about half the oil or butter in any baked recipe with something like applesauce or a comparable fruit sauce. Applesauce works generally really well. Also helps you can cut down the sugar a little bit because you're adding a little bit of sweetness with the applesauce to it. Um, and the gingerbread that we're making here has applesauce again, adding a lot to it and very little sugar in the, the cake at all. Um, biscuits use low fat buttermilk in place of the sour cream. Uh, diced dried fruit products. All things that you can do to add to the product and, and change it so it's just not a, a fat, high sugar item. Um, eliminates the frosting. Get out your box of powdered sugar. Just dust the top a little bit with powdered sugar. Good way to go. Use pureed fruit like we're using the peach sauce tonight. I'm going to show you that with the gingerbread. It's better than a frosting or better than even many powdered sugar at all. Uh, pies. On a, although we're getting the recipe and it says pie, what we're really giving you today is what I would call a crumble on a, or a crisp by eliminating the crust. As soon as we eliminate the crust from the pie, we've eliminated a lot of the calories and the fat associated with pies. Why pie is no, no good. Uh, so eliminate that. Use a graham cracker crust, which again is a whole grain item if you're going to use a crust. Or uh, top the pies, as we did here with a granola type topping, or if you just have to have your, your pie crust fixed, don't put the crust on the bottom, just put a little lattice crust on the top and you still get a little pie crust on the, on the top and it's not nearly as fat. You can use that for any kind of a pot. Now, of course, it might not cut out of the pan quite as well, so you're going to be spooning it out perhaps, but still, it's a more helpful dessert item. You get the flavor that you like and you save the calories from the crust. Use whole wheat flour for white flour and cakes, quick breads and muffins. Again, you can make a straight out substitution for at least half of the amount of flour. Um, there are different kinds of whole grain flours that you can get. Whole wheat's the most common or what you're most likely to find on the shelf here. Most of us fall short on fiber intake. I mentioned whole grains or that. Whole wheat is the most common one. But when you're looking at products in the store, mistakes that people make is that they look at something like bread, it looks like brown, it must be whole wheat, not so on there. Unless it specifically says whole wheat or whole grain on the product, whether it's a box of cereal, loaf of bread, anything like that, it is likely not all whole wheat. And so as it says here, multi-grain, second grade, 12 grain, bran breads are generally not whole grain breads. That they have different grains in them, but the, if you read the label, the first ingredient label, the first product is probably enriched white flour. There. So look at the label. The ingredients should be whole wheat, whole grain, and it should say that on the package. Um, other grains, I've listed them with a number of grains here barley, buckwheat, corn, millet, oats, quinoa, rice, wild rice, clover, ones that we've mentioned before. So there are a lot of whole grains out there. And more and more of them are appearing in the store, even in the store in the You can get all of them if you go to Lubbock and see the, um, the and see, even in the ball containers again, shoot. The, the store that used to be, not the Whole Foods store, I can't remember the name of it now, where they've got the bulk items, and they're reasonably priced here in the bulk items. You can get all of these things. Ways to use whole grains, whole grain cereals, breads, muffins, sandwiches. Add them to salad. Sprinkle them on the salad like the, the barley that we're making tonight. Soups. Add a lot of substance to soups. Cookies, cakes. Whole wheat pretzels. If you need a snack, get the whole wheat pretzels, not the potato chip. There, get the whole wheat pretzel. And you can include a hot whole grain with at least one meal a day. You'll come a long way toward helping your fiber intake and moving toward the, the my plate and the new American plate that we've been talking about. And I'm probably running over your time, but I'm fine. Uh, last thing, salt and sodium content. Most of us need to reduce our sodium content, content significantly. Uh, we eat way too much salt. The new recommendations are of 1,500 milligrams per person per day. And we probably eat that in about one meal, the way most of us, most of the foods that we eat today. Um, so high 
sodium foods that we buy, soups. Uh, if you're going to buy soup, look for the low sodium soups. Soups are one of the highest um, products with one of the highest sodium contents on the shelf. And nowadays you can get low sodium if you want to make your soup and you want to use the broth, get the low sodium broth to use and there's, it's available in the store. Uh, bottled sauces, uh, ketchup, kill the ketchup. Make yourself some salsa without the salt. Ketchup is very high in salt and sugar. Uh, soy sauce, there is some low sodium soy sauce if you like to make it Asian food. Frozen meals are bad. Uh, even canned fruits and vegetables, you can look for the low sodium ones. Now they're a little bit more expensive, so if you don't want to buy the low sodium uh, vegetables or fruits, the fruits aren't going to be as high in sodium, but the, low, the, high, the regular vegetables, open the can, drain the liquid, rinse the vegetable, and you'll get rid of about two-thirds of the sodium that was packed with it. And so you'll essentially end up with a low sodium product. And if it is a little bit cheaper, again, that's a way to go in order to get the low sodium and vegetables. Uh, sodium is naturally not a food, so when you're cooking, don't add salt till you're ready with everything else and then taste it and see if it needs it. And you can gradually train yourself to like less salty foods. You know, you really can. And so we've gotten, so even if you'll admit that if we go out somewhere, this is too salty, I really can't eat this on there. And years ago, we would have thought it was good. But we've gotten away from using salt and replaced a lot of the salt with herbs and uh, spices and things like that to add flavor, but they're not sodium. Which is another caveat when you're buying, you go to the store and you say, I'm going to buy some, some mixed herbs or mixed spices. Don't. Most of them have more salt than the mixture. Just buy the spice and make your own, add your own. Vinegar, lemon juice, um, drain liquid, I mentioned from that, from your vegetables. You can add a little bit of cheese. Cheese is salty, adds a lot of flavor to something where it's appropriate too. And the little cheese goes a long way and doesn't carry then that much sodium with it. Come on, get her. Why is it not like me sometimes? Well, anyway, we're at the end of the salt here. Um, so I guess just in closing, let me give you a couple caveats. What do we want to do? We want you to try a wide variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. We want you to not be afraid to try new foods. You don't have to eat a whole lot of it, but get a little bit, try it. You might like it. Or like your, we try to tell the kids, try it several times and see if you like it. And try to see if you can make adjustments to your recipes and the foods that you buy at the store and make some substitutions. And then by doing that, we can reduce the sugar, salt, fat in our foods and end up more healthy and be a healthier you all around. So any questions? Ms. Barry told me I need to shut up, which I do. <laughs> any questions? I started a little bit late, you know, so it's okay. <laughs> questions? If not, then we're at the high point of the evening. We have the drawing for the door prizes and then we have the samples. So where's our... This is a barley uh, that you could use in a salad. It's cold. Uh, it has lemon juice, parsley, fennel in it, and just cooked barley with mixed greens on a bed of mixed greens. Make a nice fish salad. Um, this is gingerbread uh, from a modified recipe that has applesauce, has very little sugar in it. It's made with canola oil as the oil in it, and it has uh, whole grain flour as the uh, flour that's used in it. So it's got whole grains with a fruit sauce. It's the peach sauce with it. Uh, so we got fruit combined with whole grains, combined with canola oil and apples in the, oh, in the This is an apple uh, really crumble. Uh, I would call it, the, uh, the uh, recipe in the book calls it an apple or, pie, but it's, it has no crust the, the and doesn't have a barley? crust top. It really has okay. a crumble top. It's uh, cranberries and apples and raisins <coughs> with spices with like a granola top that has oats and whole wheat in it as well as canola oil. It. So it's again, it's a, if you will, it's a healthy version of an apple cranberry pie that you might make for a holiday dessert.